in layman's terms, a boat's wake is a set of waves or a set of water disruptions that are caused by the movement of the vessel. These wakes come from a displacement of the boat's bow or from its propulsion system. Wake intensity depends on a couple of factors, like the shape of your bow and your vessel's speed. Wakes are also undoubtedly one of the funnest parts of boating. But wakes can also cause damage in a wide array of situations, including damage to shorelines via erosion, swamping and rocking of other vessels. That's a massive one, dude. We're about to get crushed. Right uh, that's going over the front. Wow! Let me get my big camera. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. How is that legal, dude? How is it legal to throw like a four foot wave like that? Harm to marine life and sensitive ecosystems. Damage to structures and other boats. and dangerous swimming conditions in the vicinity of wake-producing boat traffic. In the wake of what they went through, they would like to see action to prevent problems like this from having worse outcomes. Like pool lanes, keeping order to a busy pool, preventing wake disturbances for other swimmers. Boaters as a courtesy should follow the 100-foot rule, keeping their vessel at an idle within 100 feet of boating ship channels, ports, marinas, and waterside structures. Failure to manage your boat's wake can cause damage and even severe injury. And it can become quite expensive if you end up in a boat wake incident. Speaking of liability, your boat's wake can end up causing you serious legal trouble if you're not careful. Check out this story, for example. Imagine the following scene. After a long no-wake zone and an even longer wait for a drawbridge to open, a motor yacht is just passing through the opening. After clearing the drawbridge, both vessels pick up speed, creating significant wakes behind them. Ahead of the yacht, just outside the channel, a fisherman is trolling a small boat on the flats. Perhaps the operators of both the yacht and the sport fisher do not realize how their wakes can combine into a veritable tsunami. Regardless, the combined wake of the yacht and sport fisher violently rolls the John boat, causing serious injuries to its passengers. The passengers sue both vessels and their owners for their injuries as well as pain and suffering. It's important to remember that the incidents took place outside of any no-wake zone, so neither captain was likely overly concerned about their wakes nor realized the extent of their liability. Now, this is a true story, and interestingly enough, Nowhere in the inland waterways does it say anything about being responsible for your wake. However, the court still determined that both these boats were responsible. Hey, watch your wake! 